I'm Darren Anderson, founder of Love My Mind Mental Health and Awareness Initiative. My dad was an NHL hockey player, so it was a very uh, tough love sort of situation in our family. Not that it was abusive in any way, it was just my brother and myself were always um, looked upon to be kind of the best person slash man that we could be. Um, Dad expected a lot from us. Mark, my brother, and my father were very close. They hunted and fished together and, and uh, Dad retired from hockey. And my dad uh, started uh, losing his memory and so forth. So he was, he was then diagnosed with, with uh, a late stage Alzheimer's. And you could see the deterioration and so forth. And my brother really took that one hard because he didn't understand it. A few years went by and we lost my dad. He actually had a stroke and it, it didn't interject well with the Alzheimer's. So following dad's passing, uh, my brother, Mark, who is about nine years older than me, um, at this part of our lives, we were close and uh, did a lot of business together and so forth. Uh, that's when I saw my brother really starting to spiral and due to the effects of my, my father's passing. There was more drinking, um, but through the next few years, my brother was always the person that you went to. He was, the, he was the big brother, but he was also a father figure to everyone. You could rely on him, and you could. He was very strong in that regard. He was always very positive. Laughter was, was always present. Mark did a very good job of letting people around him know that he was okay, he's got this, and everything is gonna be just fine. Um, I noticed myself that it wasn't fine, that there was issues that he was hiding from the rest of his family. I got the phone call from my mom and my mom went to drop off some food at his house and everything seemed fine from the outside. The dog was there, the TV was on, his truck was in the, in the driveway and she called me because the door was locked so I knew in my heart that something was wrong. I phoned the police. He told me that there was a, a person, a non-responsive person inside. At that point, I just felt that I went into shock. And my only thought at that time was going outside around the front of the house and telling my mom that my brother was gone and that he took his own life. I felt an obligation as the last remaining male in the family to be strong, to be the glue, to take care of my mom, to take care of my sister, to take care of Mark's daughter, Ashley, my niece. And not realizing it at the time, but the stigma of the, uh, being a man was very relevant with myself. The grieving period began and this was right around Christmas too and and we were trying to get through Christmas and so forth and and following Christmas I then realized that I forgot to grieve and I was looking for an outlet a portal something to allow me to get through this so I began to talk to people and I started the Love My Mind Foundation initiative and um, that was a turning point um, for myself and the stigma that I still carried. I knew at that point that other men must be going through the exact same thing, that they're unable, I guess it's the view of the stigma, the word, the stigma word itself that doesn't allow men to reach out for support. But with my, the tragedy of losing my brother, it allowed me to become vulnerable, have these conversations, create these connections. There are people listening that are going through the exact same thing. So that was a big factor with 
the Love My Mind model moving forward was to start and evoke more conversations, get in front of more people, um, build the awareness of mental health more so on the, on the stigma side and more so as it pertains to men. There's definitely been a lot of great things happening to help with um, recognize the male stigma and, and get people to have these conversations.